My name is uh, Charlie Popkin. I'm an ortho resident at Miami. Um, thank you to the FOS for having me down for the weekend, and I will do my best to follow up that uh, very exciting uh, talk. So I'm here today to talk to you guys about a uh, minimally disruptive technique that we have uh, developed to treat uh, osteitis pubis in athletes. So just uh, quickly, uh, background on osteitis pubis. It's a uh, painful inflammatory condition um, that involves the pubic symphysis and the surrounding structures. Uh, the pathogenesis is actually uncertain. Some people think it's an imbalance of muscle forces, um, but almost everybody does agree that it's uh, the result of repetitive stress or uh, microtrauma. When you talk about osteitis pubis, you need to break it up into uh, three compartments or three categories. Uh, the first, which is what's relevant to this talk, sports or trauma. Uh, the second being obstetric causes, and then the third being infectious. Um, sports frequently involved uh, with osteitis pubis include soccer, uh, long distance running, uh, ice hockey, football, wrestling, and um, I guess Dr. Hodgkins can include this in his talk next year, uh, rugby. The incidence in the athletic population is about half to uh, 7%. There was a study out of the uh, Journal of Athletic Training in 2001 by Dr. Rodriguez that followed a club soccer team, um, and they had a 5% uh, incidence. That's the most uh, recent study out on that. Um, <clears throat> when you think about osteitis pubis, it can sometimes create a diagnostic dilemma. Uh, the differential diagnosis can be quite extensive and includes uh, sportsman's hernia, which is a rupture of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal, uh, adductor or rectus tendinopathies. You can have avulsion fractures, stress fractures, labral tears, and uh, osteonecrosis of the femoral head. Uh, when you examine uh, a patient and you have a suspicion for uh, osteitis pubis, there's a couple things uh, you need to do. They're usually uh, tender uh, right over the anterior pelvis, um, centered on the pubic symphysis. They will often report pain uh, aggravated by running, uh, kicking, or any pivoting uh, done on uh, one leg. Uh, specific physical exam uh, maneuvers uh, include the lateral compression test, where you have the patient in the lateral the cubitus position, and you uh, press down on the iliac wing. Uh, the cross leg test, and uh, it was also described by uh, Grace in his article in uh, 1989 out of the uh, JBJS, um, that you can uh, elicit an audible click uh, in some of these patients. Uh, the initial workup from an imaging point of view should start with an AP pelvis. Um, findings that you may see include uh, sclerosis, uh, cyst formation, and irregularity um, of the uh, joint line. If you're struggling with a diagnostic dilemma or you don't think the AP pelvis is, is helpful, there are additional uh, imaging modalities you can order, uh, including a CT scan, uh, MRI, you can, you can do a bone scan, or if you're more concerned uh, about a sportsman's hernia or something like that, you can also order a uh, ultrasound. Uh, once you've made the diagnosis of osteitis pubis, the good news is that it's usually a self-limiting condition. Um, your treatment options usually include telling the athlete to shut it down. Uh, you can start a course of anti-inflammatories. You can even perform uh, steroid injections, and you can send them to uh, physical therapy. Um, however, uh, there is a small number of patients uh, that just do not respond uh, to conservative measures uh, and require some type of surgical intervention. Um, if you look in the literature, uh, there's five described surgical options um, to treat this problem. Um, the first and most simply being just a plain curetting of the symphysis joint. This was most recently described by uh, Dr. Maheen out of the University of Calgary in the uh, Canadian Journal of Surgery in 2006. Uh, most people now do not do a complete resection of the joint, um, but that has been uh, previously described. Uh, the problem with that was uh, brought forth by Drs. Moore and uh, Dr. Mata uh, when they noted uh, a lot of posterior instability uh, in patients that had undergone uh, these resections that required late uh, sacroiliac uh, fusions uh, for this instability. Uh, the third uh, surgical option is out of uh, the Mayo Clinic, where they described a, a wedge resection uh, of the pubic symphysis. They take uh, 0.5 millimeters on each side anteriorly and uh, one centimeter on each side um, posteriorly, creating a wedge, uh, and that's done with an osteotome. 
Um, the fourth choice is an arthrodesis of the joint, which was most recently described in the American Journal of Sports Medicine uh, by Dr. Williams. Uh, they did this on seven, incidentally, uh, rugby players um, and reported uh, very good results. And the newest uh, technique is actually out of Finland. Uh, it's in the International Journal of Sports Medicine. Uh, they describe an endoscopic technique where, where they use uh, an extra peritoneal uh, retropubic synthetic mesh. So we kind of combined some of the above uh, to come up with a new technique uh, which employs a new procedure uh, to employ a more conservative approach uh, to avoid uh, radical disruption of the adjacent ligamentous anatomy uh, during uh, the treatment of osteitis pubis. We feel this is beneficial first and foremost because it's a much smaller uh, incision that's previously described. Ours is only about five centimeters. Um, in addition, it avoids uh, the radical disruption that had uh, plagued the wedge resection. And then third, it, it uses an arthroscope to check your debridement when you're done. Um, so we had four competitive athletes, two pro football players and two uh, collegiate football players uh, that were diagnosed with osteitis pubis. Uh, they had all failed conservative treatment measures for uh, six months. Uh, we had a five to six centimeter uh, fan and steel incision that was centered one to two centimeters above the pubic symphysis. Uh, sharp dissection was then carried down through campers and then scarpus fascia to expose the rectus sheath. Uh, we entered the rectus sheath to expose the abdominis um, and pyramidalis uh, muscles, uh, which provided access to the pubic symphysis, which we then identified with a spinal needle. Um, we then used uh, curettes and rongeurs and very small osteotome uh, to remove all the degenerative tissue around the joint. Uh, the debridement continued until there was evidence of bleeding on both sides of bone. Uh, at this point, we stuck in the 2.7 scope uh, to assess our debridement. Uh, since this is an athletic population, our, the result we were most concerned with was return to play. And the mean for this was three months, which is uh, on par uh, with the literature. Uh, the Finnish study had them back in two months. Um, Dr. Williams' study and the rugby players, uh, after the arthrodesis, they were back in an average of uh, three and a half to four months. Um, with the two follow-ups uh, that we had on all four patients, there was no evidence of heterotopic uh, bone formation. And final pathology that came back from all the operations uh, was uh, negative for infection and showed just uh, chronic inflammatory changes. So uh, just quickly, uh, just touching again on, on the final points of our, our approach, it was a, used a smaller incision. Um, there was less uh, ligamentous disruption, especially superiorly and inferiorly. And versus the wedge resection described by uh, Dr. Grace, there was much less uh, posterior disruption. Uh, we feel this will uh, be beneficial for long-term pelvic uh, instability that has been previously described. Um, and we feel that this can be a useful uh, surgical procedure uh, for those difficult uh, athletes uh, that have recalcitrant uh, osteitis pubis. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Vijak, uh, Dr. Heckman, as well as uh, Dr. Bado Van Bemden at the Sports Medicine Program uh, at UHC in Miami. Thanks.